Aloha and welcome to this week's edition of Business in Hawaii. My name is Jennifer Dotson and I am your host. We are broadcasting live from the ThinkTech studios here in downtown Honolulu. If you want to tune in online, join us at www.thinktechhawaii.com. While there, please subscribe to our programs and get on our mailing list. The theme of Business in Hawaii is to share with you local stories of local businesses by local people. Our guests will share with us their journey to building a successful business right here in the Aloha State. In the Thick Tech studio today is Beverly Munson, also known to me as Bev. She is a team leader for Wahine Working Smart, AAUW. Bev, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate the invitation to be here. I'm really excited to have you on the show. So for our audience, I know you, but they don't know you. Can you share with us a little bit about your experience and your background? Sure. Um, first of all, I've been very fortunate to have had a career that's been very diverse and lots of great experiences. My background is in human resources. Uh, I'm a graduate of Fresno State University, and I have a master's degree from San Francisco State University. My human resources career was mostly in the San Francisco Bay Area. However, I my last corporate job before I went into retirement full time was with Hawaiian Telecom when there was the changeover from Verizon to local uh, management. And in my career, I worked in a lot of different industries, including healthcare, insurance, government. Uh, but what was most exciting was to be involved in the software and internet industries in the beginning. Another facet of my career was that I was sort of, if you will, in the freshman class of women who were breaking into professional level and managerial careers. And that was a very exciting time. Previously, women had been viewed as being capable of only clerical jobs unless they were traditionally female professional jobs such as nursing, flight attendants that type of uh, career. So moving into corporate management, I was in that time period where we were uh, sometimes the first. In some companies, I was the first female manager in the entire company. And it was a very exciting time to be in corporate America. Well, I think this is a great segue to talk about the topic at hand that we have for this show. So we have titled this show, Wahine Working Smart. That's great. We also have a tagline, ask for the salary you deserve. That's right. So tell us and the audience how you got interested in this topic. Well, historically in America, women have been paid less than men doing the same jobs. That goes way back to our original history in the 1700s. Uh, in my generation and when during my working years, as I said, we were breaking into managerial and high-level professional careers, and most of us took whatever salary was offered to us because we were trying to blaze a, a career trail and prove that we could do these jobs. But over time, we've developed a gender pay gap that is 20% on national average, uh, varies from state to state. And you might say, well, is that really such a big deal? It actually has a huge impact on families in that over a lifetime, over let's say a 40 year career, a woman who's making 20% less than her male peers, that's almost a half a million dollars, it's $480,000 in lost income. Now that's not just a female issue though, that's a family losing income. And so how I got involved in this, is I felt that for future generations, as I look at my grandchildren and their careers, I want them, when they're having their families, to benefit from that lost income by helping close the gender pay gap. Right, and so I have been learning a lot from you. So and in my day Thank job, so in nice. my day job, I work at the National Kidney Foundation, but as a volunteer, I am a member of AAUW and I've been able to join your Wahine Working Smart team. 
And so tell us a little bit about this program that you have led up and you've, um, you've had a workshop. I understand there's another workshop coming up. But tell us a little bit about what is Wahine Working Smart for our audience members that are curious? Yes. Well, first of all, I'm really grateful that you joined the team. And um, think about it, because then if, when I finish answering your question, I'd like you to tell the audience a little bit about why you got involved. First of all, AAUW is a national organization that works towards advancing education, leadership, and equity for women in the United States. We have a long multi-century uh, history, and uh, AA, or Work Smart is an AAUW initiative. It is a training program to teach women how to negotiate their salaries. Uh, they did an extensive research study that found that men tend to naturally negotiate when they're in interview situations and women tend to approach that with a little more passivity because they're, they're concerned about coming across as too aggressive and what kind of image that might make. So through WorkSmart, we are trying to teach women how they can negotiate salaries and still maintain their professional decorum in the process and get comfortable with the process of negotiating salaries. It's a two-hour program, the WorkSmart portion. As we talked to women in Hawaii, though, we found that women that are in early to mid-career in Hawaii have uh, expressed that they want broader training. So we expanded Work Smart to Wahine Working Smart and uh, uh, customized it for the local market for the women in Hawaii. And what we uh, have done is we've added segments such as how to maximize your professional network, how to develop a network, how to maximize it, how to um, understand what protections you have under the law and how to respond in a professional and concrete manner if you're asked an illegal question in an interview, but still move the interview forward in a positive direction. We also have uh, Ann Ibaya, who is a uh, retired HR executive from G General Electric, and she does a great segment on maximizing your executive presence. And this is for women who are maybe in their first managerial job, but they're having to talk to senior executives, the real decision makers in an organization, and how they commun can communicate with that person in a way that that person will understand what they're talking about and the information they're presenting. It's a very interactive program. Uh, the, we spend a lot of time practicing. We spend a lot of time in small group workout sessions. We do online research in the class, and uh, it's overall just a great day, a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun, and I really enjoy working with our team. And yes. you, um, you mentioned Anne Abaya. We also right. have another team member, yes. uh, Hope Bennett, yes. who I absolutely love because she is a attorney by background. That's right. And she brings up amazing experience and also examples, case examples of how we need to really pay attention to Hawaii's specific employment law. So right. now you moved here uh, to Hawaii to work and you worked at a local company. Right. Um, I'm wondering if your experience working in that local company helped you sort of tailor this program to be more Hawaii specific because you did name it Wahine Working Smart, which is a take on with women working smart That's right. at the AEUW national level. Tell us about your experience working on the mainland and how it compared to working here for a Hawaii corporation. It, the big contrast is wasn't so much California versus Hawaii, but working in the software and internet industries, which by the nature of what they do is at warp speed because there's so much competition and so much new technology being developed all the time. Versus in Hawaii, there is a, a pace of doing business where you can uh, not be as, you still have to make 
decisions and get things done in an expedient and efficient manner, but it's not at warp speed. So you actually can take your time and think about long-term, uh, bigger picture results as opposed to maybe fighting a fire that's right in front of you all the time. That's not to say that doesn't happen in Hawaii, but it's the way people collaborate in Hawaii is really delightful. And there's a lot of, uh, there's a huge wealth of energy and information and expertise in this state that can really be capitalized on. So I'm wondering how that now relates back to salary negotiations. So you've talked about the, the culture, you've talked about maybe some of the ways that we do business here in Hawaii. How, salary negotiate, negotiations is not easy no matter where you are. Tell us about some of the examples or some of the feedback, some of the testimonies you've heard from the participants in these workshops, these Wahine Working Smart workshops. What have people told you? What, have, what are some of the stories they've shared with you? Well, first of all, we have been very pleased to get some positive feedback. And the, the feedback that I love the most is that people are actually using what we teach. It might be helpful if we talk about a little bit what we teach in the salary negotiation part. It's a, it's a methodology, so it's very simple to understand and it's very simple to apply. The first part is researching what uh, your salary would be. What is a competitive salary for the position that you're in or applying for? Then learning how to set a competitive range for your years of experience and your particular expertise in a job, and then developing a, a communication, a, for lack of a better word, a script, if you will, but to think not, not just to script it out, but to think about what it is you want to say and what you want to communicate so that the person you're speaking with about your salary will understand what you have to offer. Hmm. And then that's where the practice comes in. Now, the feedback we've received from the participants is that probably the number one thing we hear repeatedly is that going through the program gave them the confidence, gave them the tools and the, and the methodology, so they learned how to go about through this process, but then it also gave them the confidence to have salary conversations and be more comfortable with it. And uh, recently on Saturday, Hope and I had breakfast with a group of five of our most recent grads, and they've all changed jobs since they took the course in May. They all were successful in negotiating salaries higher than they were originally offered. Well, this is fantastic. And so before we break, because we are going to come back and hear more about this, could you just give us, a, again, a really short summary of what is Wahine Working Smart and the topic that we're talking about, and then we'll go to break. So right. Bev, tell us a little bit. Wahine Working Smart is a free four-hour program. The next one's going to be November 16th uh, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. It'll include morning refreshments and lunch. It is at Impact Hub, and it will include all of the topics that we've been talking about, plus lots of opportunity to practice with your peers in the job market. Fabulous. And again, this is Bev Munson, our guest today on Business in Hawaii. We are going to take a short break. I am Jennifer Dotson, and I am your host. We'll see you back here shortly. Aloha, I'm Winston Welch, host of Out and About. It's a show that we have every other Monday on Think Tech Live here. We explore a variety of topics that are really interesting. We explore organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. We've got some amazing guests on here, like all the shows at ThinkTech. So if you want to catch up on stuff, tune into my show every other Monday and other shows here on ThinkTech Live. It's a great place to learn about stuff, to be informed. And uh, if you have some ideas, come on my show. Let's talk about it. See you later. And aloha. Aloha. Stan Energy Man here. You can see me every Tuesday at 3 p.m. here on ThinkTech Hawaii. Uh, we're not on Friday anymore, so don't be looking for me on Friday. I'm on Tuesday at 3 here on Think Tech, coming to you live and direct from the beautiful studios in downtown Honolulu's Pioneer Plaza. So please join me. 
and we'll talk everything about hydrogen and clean energy, not only for Hawaii, but for the whole wide world. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii. My name is Jennifer Dotson, and I am your host. With us today in the studio is Bev Munson, team leader, Wahini Working Smart AAUW. Welcome, Bev. Thank you, Jennifer. So here we are after the break. I was wondering if you could tell our audience a little bit about the work you're doing now. Well, I, I am volunteering in a couple of capacities with AAUW. I uh, not only head up the Work Smart team, which we've been talking about, and in a few minutes, I'd like you to tell the group what you do with the Work Smart team and a little bit about your background, because I think they'd like to know that, and it's important to, to share that. I also, we have a book discussion group where we read books on women's issues that are important to women today. And it's more of a, it's not just a normal book club, but it is actually a, a format of educating ourselves on issues that are affecting women. In addition to that, I have in the past worked on the public policy committee for the state chapter of AAUW. And a couple of years ago, we were able to uh, take the lead in passing some very important legislation to try and grow, uh, to close the gender pay gap. One problem is when people are asked their salary history and they've been paid less than their peers in the same job, that Salary history then causes that lower salary to be imported from one job to the next. So I am happy to say that in Hawaii now, that question is no longer allowed in a pre-employment interview or on an application form. Employers can ask what a person's salary expectations are, but this history is relevant because Salary history has no direct relevance to what the person brings to the next job. So I've worked on that, and that involves meeting with legislators. It involves writing written testimony. It involves going to the legislative hearings and giving testimony and answering questions and trying to help educate legislators as they consider different bills. Now, Jennifer, I've been uh, saying that I'm going to ask you to tell everyone about your background, and I think it's important to, for you to share your story about how you became involved in, with AAUW. Oh, Bev, you're too kind, and now you're turning the tables on me. It's like the interviewer gets interviewed. So you're very, you're very skilled in your negotiations, I must say. I, um, I've been very, very fortunate to work with you in AAUW, but also very fortunate to get involved with this organization. And before I received a grant from them, and I'll tell you, um, the audience a little bit about this grant, I actually was familiar with them. I had heard about them in the past. I was involved um, as the president of the Junior League of Honolulu, and we shared an affinity for women's empowerment, and in fact, shared an office in the historic AAUW home in Makiki. And so I was familiar with AAUW, but never did I ever imagine that at the age that I am, in the career that I am, at the point in my employment that I am, that I would receive a grant. And this specific grant is called a Leadership and Professional Development Grant. It is given out by AAUW. I had no idea. And um, I applied and I uh, spoke about how, um, as a fundraiser for a nonprofit organization, unfortunately, Nonprofits don't have a lot of money for right. professional development. And I know you're in HR and you believe very strongly in professional development. Now, maybe in the private sector, you might have resources and a budget for professional development. But most nonprofits, unfortunately, we just don't have money to go right. to the staff that will be used for professional development. That is something that I've... Um, been very creative about and looking for alternatives. So um, I was I came across the AAUW um, uh, website. They were also very um, very good about advertising about this leadership and professional development grant on social media. Mm -hmm. And so I looked it up and I applied, and I received 
$4,000 to apply to anything I needed in terms of professional development. What I ended up using it for was to attend a conference. It's an international conference of uh, fundraising professionals. It was held in San Antonio this past spring. And thousands of fundraisers from all around the world gather uh, to hear the best speakers, the best workshops, the best seminars, to really make us better fundraisers. And the reason why that is important is because I don't only fundraise for the National Kidney Foundation, which is an important mission. Right. And we save lives and we do so much work in terms of uh, kidney disease and preventing kidney disease and raising awareness about organ transplantation. But I also volunteer as a fundraiser for my kids' schools. Right. So as a PTA member, I am responsible of working together with other parents, all volunteers, to raise money so that the school has better programs for my child. So the fact that I received a $4,000 grant from AAUW, I was so pleased at my age to receive this opportunity because I know a lot of times professional development is reserved for maybe younger staff members because you want to, you know, you want to boost them up. But to make a, um, someone who's at my point in uh, career to be better, I feel like I really was able to amplify my skills to do more good work for the community. And so I'm very grateful that AAUW also included as part of that grant membership this amazing organization and that's how I met you and that's how I was able to get involved with Wahine Working Smart. And so please again remind our audience today we're talking about Wahine Working Smart. Right. We have a tagline here, don't leave money on the table. That's right. Negotiate for the salary you deserve. <laughs> When I received the grant, it actually coincided with the point in time that I started my new job at the National Kidney Foundation. Mm -hmm. So tell us and tell the audience here about what is Wahine Working Smart, what are you covering in the workshop, and some of the um, maybe tips and tricks that you feel are important for those of us who are negotiating salaries, because it's not easy. It isn't easy. As I said before, one of the segments of the program that we spend some time on, and this is the beauty of the internet being in our phones and we can just quickly look up something, we actually have each participant look up either their current job or jobs that they're aspiring to in the workshop to start figuring out what is a competitive salary for people with their experience and expertise and then how to take that and set a target salary that they're going to aspire to, either when it's time to talk about their salary in their current position or when they're interviewing for new positions, and then to practice the delivery of the messaging. So one of the things that a lot of people don't know how to do is how, that they don't recognize that when they're in a job interview, that's their marketing campaign. They're there to sell the person that's interviewing them and the company that they're interviewing with on what they have to offer, what they can contribute in that job and to the organization as a whole. And we find, I know, as someone who's interviewed thousands of people, there are very, very talented people out there who are really smart and have a lot to offer, but they don't know how to communicate it because before they go into an interview, they just think about how nervous they are, how they're worried about whether they're gonna get the job or not, instead of what is it that if I have only 15 minutes, I want this person to remember about what I bring to the table, what I have to offer this organization, what I can do to improve their organization's performance. And oh. that's what we do in the program, along with the other things we've talked about previously. Okay, so you're an HR executive. You, like you said, you've interviewed a ton of men, women for these positions to join your company. Let's say I'm a candidate, and I'm really interested to join you. Right. I've done well in my interviews. Now we're at the point in time where we need to negotiate a salary. So it's both ways, right? I have 
a number in my mind because as a working mother, I need to support my family. I have a mortgage to pay. I have to buy groceries. I have electricity bills and a car payment, all of these things. So I have a number in my mind. Here's my question for you. Let's say you have a number in your mind as well because right. you have your budget. You as an HR um, executive have, uh, you know, your marching orders to fill this position. What if those numbers don't match up? My number is higher than your number. Your number doesn't match my number. And I feel that I've been um, <clears throat> offered a salary that's lower than what I would like. What are, what are we going to do here? Does, your, does this workshop actually teach us what to do? And if so, share with us a little bit of those details. There's, I'm glad you've asked that question because it's a really important question and it's a critical part of the workshop. It's not always just about salary, not just about base salary. There are many components to compensation. Uh, one can be that there might be bonuses involved. The other might be paid time off. The other might be the benefits package. So let's say, for example, you have a number in mind because in your current job, you have to pay a certain amount for health insurance for yourself and your family. And so you know that, okay, you have the expectation you're going to have to uh, spend that much. But then I might sit down with you and I might say, well, Jennifer, let's look at the whole package before we talk about salary further. And at my company, we actually provide a health insurance plan for you, your spouse, and your children under the age of 26 at the total cost of $50 a month or $100 a month, as opposed to maybe the $300 that you're paying, you might say, well, that closes the gap a little bit more. You might also say, Jennifer, in your position, you'll start with three weeks paid time off. And oh, by the way, we have a personal time off program. So you, it's not just vacation you can use it for, but you have that time to use for if your children are sick or you want to take time off or whatever. Well, so it sounds like it really is a negotiation and the more right. practice that we can have, the better. So this workshop, I understand, provides those opportunities. Bev, I feel like we can just go on and on we about could. this That's uh, for topic. Sure. For our audience, if they don't have time to attend this workshop in person, can you share with them where they can go online to take this um, educational opportunity for free? That's right. AEUW has an online version of WorkSmart. It takes two hours, but you can do it in small segments. AAUW.org. That is fabulous. For a busy working mom like me, I love those resources. Bev, thank you so much for being my team leader at AAUW. Thank you for sharing this important information with our audience. We are actually out of time. So I would like to say to our audience, thank you again, Bev Munson of AEUW for joining us. And a great big thank you to the great production staff here in the Think Tech studio. If you would like to be a guest on this show, please like us, subscribe, and leave a comment below. This is Hawaii airs every Thursday at 2 p.m. We look forward to seeing you here next week. I am Jennifer Dotson, mahalo.